Hi guys, with me is the African Sun, born under the African Sun, award winning singer, songwriter. I'm talking about Tetu Shani, and as usual, I'm your host, the one and only Pulala Master, straight out of Boombas, Kenya. Welcome. Hi, bro. Hey, bro. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk about your musical, your musical journey. Okay. Anyway, before your musical journey, for those who don't know who Tetu Shani is, mm. just give them a little highlight or a little history about yourself. Okay. Tetu Shani is. Um is a singer songwriter that's how i kind of define myself uh, i don't really fit into a particular genre of music um, you know but for now i guess you could say i'm doing afro fusion afro pop uh, kind of stuff but uh, yeah you know africa sun man that's the best way to put it you know light is shining brighter and brighter yeah, yeah man uh speaking of africa and africa sun mm. i think to me mm. to me that is your biggest song to date Mm. You know, especially given the fact that you know you worked with uh, Mr. Easy's project, mm. you are part of Mr. Easy's project and power. You know, and coming up with this track, mm. and apart from that, you also have a couple of tracks. You know, Pump It, mm. Love I Only, and all that. Mm. How would you describe your musical journey so far? My musical journey has been so unpredictable. Actually, you know, the reason why I don't I don't do five year plans, ten year plans is because if you had told me five years ago that I'd be here. Yep. I wouldn't have believed you, you know. So, so one thing that's interesting about my musical journey is that it's been very unpredictable. It has actually been quite fast as far as the kind of growth that has happened. But then it's also been in line with what it is that I want for myself yep. as an artist. I've been very particular about forging sort of my own path instead of trying to figure out, okay, what are other people doing and how can I try and do whatever it is that they're doing. But, you know, for now, man, it's just hits always. Just, you know, to try and write the best songs possible to try and put on the best shows possible and to continue to make the fans happy. Okay. Yeah. So how was the whole experience, you know, working under Empower with Mr. Easy? First of all, do yeah. you, did you meet him in person or what? No, I've never met Mr. Easy in person. We just talked on WhatsApp. So um, for people who don't know, there was a competition called Empower Africa. Yeah. You submit like a, like a 15 second, 30 second video of you performing a song. And if it meets the standard, then you get uh, $3,000 scholarship money to shoot a music video. I made it to the top 100. That was a big honor. Um, and of course, they were able, they facilitated me shooting the Africa Sun music video, which was massive, massive, massive for me because for a lot of artists, the problem is never recording the song. The problem is always trying to get the funds to shoot a video that is competitive. Yeah. 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 Cool. So uh, back, to the, back to the local music scene. Mm. Uh, you've worked with uh, Mayonde, you've worked with Sage, mm. and uh, another thing about your music, your, your music kind of appeals to the ladies more. Mm. You know, I feel like you're more of a ladies man with your music, yeah. and maybe that uh, states why you've, all, you've worked with uh, the likes of Mayonde mm. and, uh, and Sage. Mm. So what's next for you, you know, in Kenya, apart from after working with Mayonde and Sage and doing all these projects you've done for the last couple of years, the last couple of months, Mm. What's next for you? Okay. Well, one surprising fact eh, is um, people always feel sort of that my, my audience is, is more women. Yeah. But you know, the funny thing is when you look at my, my, my statistics online, mm. like I literally have a 50-50 split. Okay. <laughs> the issue is dudes who like my music mm. don't usually come for the live shows. <laughs> the women come for the live shows. Yeah. I don't mind. It makes me look good, you know. If you have, you know, all, you know, those beautiful Kenyan girls there screaming and, and singing a song word for word. But uh, what's next for me and really what I'm, I'm focused on are two things. Number one is Awesome Challenge. Awesome Challenge is one song a month. Yeah. So the last five months of last year, I challenged myself and four other artists in Nairobi to be releasing a song a month. And um, it worked out so well. The response was so, so, so positive. People were just like, we want content. We want more content. That I've decided to continue it for the rest of 2020. Okay. So from now until December 2020, you can expect a new song, brand new song, every single month from Tetushani. Great. Uh, number two is the Journey to 1000 uh, concert series. Um, I want to fill a stadium with my fans by 2023. Nice. And so we're beginning it this year by starting small. They say a journey of a thousand steps begins, a thousand miles begins with one step. So the step we're doing, uh, February 9th, we're going to be um, having a show at Alchemist. We're going to have four shows there uh, this year yeah. with the objective of having a thousand fans by November at that venue. Uh, sounds like an easy thing, but man, you know what? Like, funny enough, yeah. I know so many people who have like a million views on their video. They have 500,000 views. 
but they cannot bring 25 paying people to a show. We have this thing where Kenyan artists, we're always waiting for international artists to come into town so that we can jump on the show. Hey, you now tell your manager, put me in, so-and-so is coming, yo, Rick Ross is in town, yo, how can I get on that, whatever. The problem with that is that's why most Kenyan careers in music don't go beyond three years. Yeah, yeah, true. Because as long as you're hot and on radio, then you have a career. But then what happens when you're no longer able to play on radio? Well, what's supposed to happen is that for most of the established acts, they're supposed to be doing their own shows, bro. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be building their audiences. How is it that the biggest acts in this country mm -hmm. uh, can only pull like 2,000 people to a show? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. so, so those are the two major projects, really. Journey to 1,000, the awesome challenge that I'm really, really excited about for this year. And by the way, guys, uh, you can get tickets to Journey to 1,000 on MOOC.com, right? Yes. Yeah, just go yes. follow him on Instagram. Check the link on his bio. I mm -hmm. saw the links to the ticket over there. Yeah. Journey to 1,000. Yeah. By uh, Teddy Shang. Yeah. So apart from uh, you know Journey to 1,000, mm -hmm. I've seen you performing a number of concerts. You know, mm -hmm. you you performed at the Koroga Festival. You performed at the the Tasca mm -hmm. October Fest. Yeah. You know, you've also shared a stage with a Grammy. Yes. Grammy Award winner. Yes. Like. Which is that one concert, you know, you performed and uh, you felt like this is it. This is the biggest moment of my career. Yeah. Uh, it was an honor to perform at Koroga Fest. It was an honor to perform at Tusker October 1st. But it's funny, my favorite concert yeah. was actually performing at K1 for something called Night Fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Night Fest was lit. It was amazing because the way I judge concerts is, are my people with me, you know? Uh, some of the problems with these corporate sort of events is um, my people don't necessarily come through, you know. Um, but at Nightfest, I mean, people were singing songs word for word. Nightfest was the first time that most of the crowd I'm looking and I don't recognize people. You know, when, you, when you're an artist, you start off with your friends and your family. Yeah, yeah. But then they reach a point, the turning point in any artist's career is when you look out in the audience and there's more people that you don't recognize than the people that you do recognize. So that was Nightfest for me. It was a fantastic show. Um, my fans came through. Um, big, another big highlight, Jays. I've always had fantastic shows at Jays in Westlands. Um, so yeah, I would say those, those two shows were probably my highlight. Okay. Yeah. So back to the awesome challenge. It's called Awesome Challenge. Awesome Challenge, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about yeah. I've seen you talking about uh, avocado. Are you planning to go to the into the avocado business in summer? <laughs> <laughs> you know, bro. You know when you talk, start to talk about avocado, you know you 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 potentially divide a nation because you know in this country we have two kinds of people: avocado lovers and people who love watermelon. Yeah. And the two don't mix. But anyway, uh, I have a song coming out soon. Actually, it's dropping next week, Friday. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be available on Boomplay, by the way. It's called Avocado. It's, 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 an, it's an ode. It's a tribute to one of my favorite fruits. You know, I was just, in my head, man, I was just like, you know, sometimes we, as artists, we write songs about the same things, the same things, the same things, you know, but I, as far as I know, I haven't seen, seen anyone write a song about a fruit. So I'm about to be that guy, you know. So Avocado drops February 7th. You get it. Uh, yeah. the uh, the process of making your music. Yeah. Uh, you also produce. Yes, um, uh, I'm not only a singer-songwriter, but I'm a composer and an arranger. So what that means is that when I go into the studio, rarely is it a situation where like a beat maker gives me a beat mm. and then I write. Yep. Usually, I'll come into the studio with the entire song in my head mm. and bassline because I'm, I'm an instrumentalist as well so the bassline is in my head the keys are in my head the 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 guitar riffs and all that kind of stuff and so what i do is i go in the studio and now i start giving directions okay put this here add this arrange this blah 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 mm. and um in the music world that's called co-producing okay. you know so i definitely i i do want to get deeper into production one day and yeah. hopefully like god willing be reach a point where now i'm producing for other people okay yeah then uh, lyrically you're so dope there's no doubt about that mm -hmm. you know your mm -hmm. lyrical prowess is up there you know the best mm -hmm. and um, have you ever considered uh, ghostwriting I'm a is there any artist because mm -hmm. basically like honestly speaking mm -hmm. uh, I've thought about it many times mm -hmm. I think one of the issues is that I'm a great writer but mm -hmm. my I my, my voice comes on so strongly mm -hmm. so I feel like if I write, 
I write for someone and the times I've tried to write for someone, it, it ends up sounding like a Tetu Shani song. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. it sounds like someone is singing Tetu's lyrics. So I think one of the things that I want to grow in is maybe learn how to write um, in a way that is accommodates like a person's style, yeah. you know. Um, I have my own style, you know, based on, on the way I sing and my vocal, whatever, like the, uh, there's a way that I'll arrange lyrics, it'll generally be percussive because I have a background in percussion, it'll be all this kind of stuff, which is great, it makes my music very unique, yeah. but so unique that it makes it difficult to write for other people without people going, I, I think this is Tetu's song, being okay. some, yeah. So is there that one, is there that one Kenyan art, you know, you always dreamt of working with, um, uh, you look forward to working with just that one? That one Kenyan musician, I'm a, in, in East Africa or Africa, whatever. Yeah. You know, um, I think a few come to mind. Um, I really respect Blinky Bill yeah. from Just a Band. Um, I know he's not Kenyan, but he's been here for a long time. I respect Kidum. Yeah. You know, um, I really, really respect BN's songwriting. Mm. You know, even just him as an individual. Um, and so there's a lot of things in play in store, bro. Um, I'm looking at doing a remix to Pump It. Uh, it's, it's not official yet, but I'm looking at doing a remix with Ben Soul okay. for Pump It, you know. And so I really respect what Soul Generation are doing. Mm. Man, it's an it's amazing time to be Kenyan right now. Yep. There's fantastic, fantastic talent in the scene. Cool. For the yeah. for for the last five years, mm. how would you rate how how would you rate the Kenyan music scene? Has it grown to you? Am I? It's stagnated. Oh, it's grown. Yeah, definitely it's grown, and more more than it even growing, I think our audience has grown. Mm. So where Kenyans were at five years ago in terms of their appreciation of Kenyan content, in terms of them actively looking out for Kenyan music, Kenyan songs, or whatever, mm. has grown, 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 grown to the point where now there are people who just want Kenyan content. Mm. And what happens is when demand increases supply. Right, yeah. and then the supply influences the demand. So, the more demand there has been from Kenyans to get Kenyan music, Kenyans have been delivering, and it's it's been really fantastic. Yeah, like you said, the demand is up there. Mm. The yeah. demand in Mepanda. Mepanda, but also the supply. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like, uh, honestly speaking, do you feel like uh, Kenyan acts, Kenyan mm. musicians, mm. supply their fans with the best produce? You know, ile chakulo kikula tau yeah. Okay, mina feel ka shida yetu ni tuna copy sana. So what happens is um it has been and this of course is a Tetushani opinion. Um Kenyans in general with business, we are generally afraid to be the first person to do something. We like to watch and see what someone else is doing and then we do that. So you see that maybe once upon there's a person who becomes an uber driver next thing you know there's 12 uber drivers all because of that one guy or there's a lady who's selling omena on the street corner she's the first one then people watch hey she's doing well all of a sudden there's six other people so what has happened is because of genge tone and its pop popularity i feel like there's been a lot a lot a lot of artists who have come up in that particular genre which is cool but I feel like we do still need more diversity mm. in Kenyan music, yeah. more options. Mm. Um, if you go Kibandaski, Ama Kempinski, whatever, mm. what you're looking for is variety. No one wants to live on Chipo yeah, yeah. every single day. No one wants to live on just Ugali every single day. Mm. A balanced meal is when you can have greens, Kanyamapo, you know, a starch or whatever. Mm. And I feel like we haven't yet reached a place as Kenyans where we're still providing the fans with a balanced meal. Mm. If they want to listen to ballads, they have this artist. Mm. If they want a fantastic gospel musician, they have this. If they want music that makes them feel sad, they have this. Mm. We still can grow in that area. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, they always say that uh, in every bad place, mm. there must be something good out of it. Mm. You know. So in Kenya right now, mm. that one person you feel. Uh, as put out, as put us out there on the continent, you know, out there on the world map. Mm. Apart from, uh, okay, I I understand that you know Gengeton mm. uh, has made waves and all that, mm. you know, made penya penya uku. Yeah. But apart from the Gengeton acts, mm. well, well, that one person, number two or three, whatever, mm. that you feel have been putting in the work, you know, giving us quality supply. Uh, Apart from you, of course. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the few people I respect, I think Blinky Bill has really been doing that. I think Mudoni Drama Queen is another one who has really been making an impact outside of our borders. Um, um, 
in terms of live performance, there's Macadem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Macadem has really been, yeah, and Atembea Atembea. Okay. Um, then there's there's other ones that people don't even know. There's a there's a fantastic artist called Maya. Mm -hmm. Maya. Uh, she's called Maya and the Big Sky. The Big Sky is the name of her band. Okay. Um, believe it or not, there was a Kenyan who was nominated for a Grammy. J. S. Ondara. People don't know this. Kenyan, as in he grew up in Nairobi, but he relocated to the States, I think, later on in his life. Okay. Um, uh, there's Karun. There's there's Zenia Manasse. There's there's a few, there's a few, but there need to be more. Cool. Yeah. Last but not least, mm. uh, 2020. So you're giving us 12 tracks. Mm -hmm. 12 tracks. Then uh, we have uh, the journey to a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you look forward to feeling Kasarani in. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if it'll be Kasarani. I, I mean, I'll receive it, bro. Amen to that, man. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> you've had it. You've had it, yeah, Kasarani. Yeah, yeah. But then, uh, we, we are filling up Kasarani. We're filling up Kasarani. I'll, I'll be the MC. It is possible. <laughs> this thing is possible, man. Yeah, yeah. We are filling up Kasarani by 2020. No. 2023. 2023, yeah. 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 We're in 2020, right? We're in 2020 now. So that gives us three years. I have three years. Yeah. So, what is that one message you have for your fans, you know, this year going forward? Um, I think the message I have for my fans is um, feel the fear, but do it anyway. I'm not doing what I'm doing because I'm extremely more gifted than other people. Um, the case in my life is just that I decided to be consistent with something. Consistent in spite of the doubt, consistent in spite of the lack of support sometimes from people you care for. Consistent. Uh, in spite of maybe the lack of funds, the lack of money. And I just want to say that if I can do it, you can do it too. Um, I, I, I would like to imagine that my role and function in the Kenyan industry is to, to let people know that this is possible, you know. This is possible for regular human beings, you know. So uh, to the fans, I'll just say whatever that thing you have in your heart, you have in your spirit, the thing you know that God has put in you to do, um, just do it, man, you know. Fail forward, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, but just do it. That's what I would say. Cool. Hi guys, you heard it from the man himself, Tedushani. Tedushani. <laughs> they have Kansan and I will be your host, Noah, aka the Pulola Master. Keep it Boombas KE. Follow us across our social media platforms at Boombas KE.